Okay, welcome to your first lecture. This is lecture one on concepts and objects. Now, the objectives for this lecture will be to cover oracle forms concepts, which means basically how the oracle form works, and then the mandatory form objects. What I mean by this is um, the different elements which are required to be in every oracle form. And this, this will include identifying these items, which includes things like canvases and frames, and then we'll define the base table blocks and modules, and then we'll discuss um, how to relate mandatory forms objects. Now, before you go forward with a series, it's important that you have the proper software. Now, this means that you have to have an Oracle database. Now, what we're at currently is 8i. Of course, there'll be future versions, and um, the Oracle Forms Developer, which is a development environment for creating the forms. Now, there are two ways that you can get a copy of both of these products. The one is the, the Oracle 8 database and the, the Oracle Forms Developer. You can order a trial license CD from the Oracle Store, or you can also download it from um, TechNet. Now, uh, when you go into TechNet, you have to register, and that's a free registration, and then you'll be able to download it. Now, there are two other Oracle sites that are important for you to be aware of, and this is where you can go to get the latest product information. The first one is uh, www.oracle.com, and also the, uh, the TechNet site where you downloaded the information. Those are both free and open to anybody. Now, there's another very good site, which is Metalink, which is the HTTP metalink.oracle.com. And this site is actually just for um, people who have a, an Oracle license, so you won't be able to make use of that with a trial license. But once you're um, working in a situation where you do have the proper license, this is a great site. You can get all the latest information, uh, different kinds of um, updated support files, and uh, you'll find this to be very useful. Now, basically, you wonder, what is Oracle Developer? Now, Oracle Developer includes a number of different products, including forms, reports, graphics, and a few other things. So Oracle Developer is an integrated development environment for building a client-server database applications that are portable um, to a variety of GUI character modes, and that can also be deployed on the World Wide Web. So now the question is, how does Oracle Forms work? Now, this is very different from what you've learned up to now, because you've been learning SQL and PL SQL, and those are sequential programs uh, that you can pretty much read through. So a form is not like that. There are no main controlling routines. There are functions and procedures, but they respond to events. So we say that Oracle Forms is an event-driven program, um, meaning that when a user or the system initiates an event, then the form responds to it. So here we have a number of different event types. We have user events, which is like um, a user moving their mouse somewhere or clicking on a button or something like that, and also keyboard, which of course means entering text or typing. And then we have system events, which includes like a clock, system messages, and then we also have program events, which includes things like error handling. Uh, now, event-driven program means that it responds to triggers, and that the triggers are PL SQL code, which you've grown accustomed to uh, from your prior studies, and that, that's what's being used to respond to the different events. Um, here's an example. Like, you have a button, like the Save button that you see here. Let's say that's like on a form. And that button will have a when button pressed trigger, which is associated to it. Now you see, this is a very basic PL SQL block where we have, you know, if the user is Bob, then commit the form. What this means is this the save button is only going to uh, work if your if your name is if your username is Bob. Um, so now it's important to realize that these PL SQL uh, triggers are are slightly different than the ones that you've you've come accustomed to from running to the database. We'll get more into that in a future chapter on uh, triggers. So now we're going to cover the mandatory form objects, and this includes um, items, canvases, windows, base table blocks, non-base table blocks, and modules. 
So now, what is an item? Now, an item is uh, it's the interface object that display information to an operator and allow them to interact with your application. The most common items that you're probably used to is like a text box that you type in your name. You probably see this on you know, forms that you fill out on the web and other applications. So each item in a form, a text item, an image item, a radio group, and so on, all of these belong to a block. So, um, and items have a number of properties, and these properties have to do with how you control the look and the feel, and, uh, and some of it also has to do with um, how it responds to events. Now, canvases are an element of the form, and this would be the same whether you were using form just on a client server or if you were deploying it on the web. A canvas is similar to a painter's canvas in that it's a surface inside the window container in which you place the different interface objects that the end users interact with. And canvases contain frames. And it's important to realize that one window can have multiple canvases, and these canvases can come into vision, and they can also disappear depending on different um, user actions or system uh, events. And we'll get more into that in, in later chapters. So the windows are the basic physical container of all the form objects. You could think of this as like um, the frame of a painting. And there are properties that can be changed at design time. And windows also have titles and icons, and they have sizable borders. And um, remember that after you do this, you listen to this lecture, then you'll go and watch the demonstration. and. In the demonstration, I'll actually show you some of these different um, components of the form, and you'll get a better understanding of what they are. So the next thing that we have is a base table block. Now, a block is different than a PLSQL block. A block here is, is also a logical container. It contains a number of the different core elements. And basically, the way that the form is structured that one block would relate to a single database table or a view. And at the same time, you can have um, non-database items in the block, although it's usually a good idea to separate those. Um, and the base table block is logical in the sense that it's, it's getting the data from the database, so it doesn't have physical properties. We also have non-base table blocks. And what this means is, this is a collection of items in the form that are not related to a database item. Um, and they contain non-database bound objects like buttons, et cetera. And they can have text items from the database, but these would be populated via trigger. So if you think of it, uh, the, the items in the non-base table block are not being called um, from the database, or they're not being queried from an SQL statement when the form is, is first queried. And again, this is just a, a logical item, so it doesn't have a physical property. Um, in the next two chapters, we'll cover more of, of what some of these physical properties are. Now, a module is a logical container for all objects in a form. You can think of a module as, as a file, because in, in most cases, that's what it is. And um, usually, we name the module the same name as the file. It's easier to maintain it that way. So a module is a collection of objects and code routines. An example um, of objects include windows, text item, buttons, all the PLSQL code, all the different um, components that you're going to learn in this lecture series. And now we've, can, we've finished the basic introduction into the components of a form. And now what I'd like you to do is to um, to go ahead and watch the demonstration. And what I'm going to do is open up the two forms that you um, have on the CD or downloaded from the web, which is EX0101 and EX0102. And we're going to look at the different components. And then when you're finished with um, watching the demonstration, then um, you have to complete the assignment for lecture one. What this consists of is reading the chapter, now, the way that the, the chapter works is you read a short introduction, and then there's a lab, and there are exercises, and you, um, you then you know, go and look at the answers and, and work through the whole process to make sure you understand everything. Then we have um, two extra sessions 
sections, which are kind of uh, to take you one step further. Um, if you read the text and do all the labs, you'll get the core understanding. And then if you complete the tester's thinking, these are additional exercises to give you a chance to try these uh, with something slightly different. And then um, on the website, we also have practice questions. And what these practice questions do is they're just multiple choice questions. It's a way to test your knowledge to make sure that you've, that you've um, comprehended everything in the chapter. And then you can move on to the next lecture and proceed forward. Thank you.